The Cosmic Guardian goes to the hideout after rescuing Abraxas from the rubble in the Temple of Autumn. As they're escaping the Temple of Autumn, an angry god from the realm of ancient Egypt appears and kind of chastises them for uh, causing some destruction. This god whisks them away, kind of by force, <laughs> into a sandstorm that opens up and clears and leads them to Ra's abandoned outpost. The Cosmic Guardian approaches and meets Medjit and Horus. Medjit is the guardian of the hideout. She is this warrior-like demigod. Careful. Keep walking and you'll find the end of my spear. You look very different from every other god in ancient Egypt. You are this blue cosmic being. And so they regard you with a lot of caution and are very wary of what your intentions are as you approach the space. Nonetheless, Horus brings you in to ask you some questions and you enter the hideout. This is the Great Hall of the Sun. Nestled in Horus's hideout, deep off the coast of the Forbidden Desert, this area used to be Ra's abandoned outpost. This space will serve as a hub for you, and when you come into the world of ancient Egypt, you will add so much more to this, bringing life to these halls so that you can use them for crafting and cooking and hunting and so much more. One of the first ally gods you meet is Bess. Bess is a merchant and one of Horus's oldest allies. Bess runs the bazaar in the hideout, which is one of the first areas that you unlock. In the bazaar, you can craft common materials, potions, and a whole range of items that you'll find useful whenever you're in your mortal form out in the world of ancient Egypt. The second ally god that you recruit is Ptah, the craftsman, who can create a ton of armor and weapons for you and also tell you where these great temples and mysteries are in the Great Sand Sea. After you recruit Ptah, you recruit two more ally gods into the hideout. However, these ally gods are also a little bit strange compared to the other ancient Egyptian gods. These gods are foreigners to land, just like yourself, and they actually come from a far away mythology. These two gods, Castor and Polydeuces, will help you with crafting hunting gear and cooking food for your quest. So cooking is such a fun element in the game, and a lot of folks will probably recognize that it's very new to Asgard's Wrath 2 compared to Asgard's Wrath 1. As you explore the Great Sand Sea, you'll collect anything from game meat to eggs to pomegranates, and you'll be able to bring them back to the hideout where you can cook those things into different recipes. Different recipes will give you different health and regenerative boost, and also you'll have different perks with those recipes as well as they relate to your followers. Hunting is a very important part of the Asgard's Wrath 2 universe. The Great Sand Sea and all the worlds in Asgard's Wrath 2 feel like living worlds with wildlife and creatures that you can hunt for varying purposes. With the hunting and crafting system, you can craft bait to hunt down apex predators. So Apex Predators will drop specific loot that you can use to upgrade your armor or your weapons or maybe even in different potions. They're kind of like their own mini bosses within the whole wildlife creature class. You can also create traps as well. Traps are basically items that you can lay on the ground that will cause AOE damage or do some sort of effect to any creature that crosses it and kind of giving you a little bit more planning whenever you're doing your combat scenarios. So the hideout holds uh, more than just these crafting stations and these ally gods that'll give you advice and quests. It also holds mini games. So you can play either in the slingshot range where it's kind of like a shooting gallery where you're tasked with you know, using a slingshot and hitting targets for different prizes and leaderboards. And there's also a disc slider mini game in there as well. It's kind of a cross between a pinball setup and a shuffleboard. There's a third with the fishing as well. So when you're in the environments of the Great Sand Sea, you'll come across various oases and rivers where you can pull out your fishing pole and just fish and just chill and enjoy the environment while also gathering resources for cooking. When you get into the environments for Asgard's Wrath 2, you'll be exploring these massive maps. Hidden within those maps are these little pillars of Neith. So Pillars of Neith are temples dedicated to the goddess Neith. The priestesses do ritual combat challenges. In those combat arenas, you'll have a number of ritual challenges to overcome. If you are able to overcome them, and by the way, you have to be a very, very, very fierce, powerful warrior to do it. It's gonna require a lot of skill. If you're able to overcome them, you can unlock an endless mode for that combat arena and also some additional perks. As you stand in these halls, it's massive. You can really feel this space 
is a space for gods, and as you go through the game, it'll populate with all these allies and friends that you'll gain along the way to help you in your search for Loki.